This is Keys to the Shop, episode 483, an encore episode of six essential qualities for coffee shop leaders. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DeFirio. I'm your host for the show. Always happy to have you here, and I would encourage you to subscribe to the show. You can also uh, subscribe on YouTube and hit the notification on the YouTube channel at Keys to the Shop. And we are putting out a lot more of the uh, video podcasts as well as uh, working on some original content that is not just the podcast but is YouTube specific. So you want to stay plugged in there. Also, I want to let you know that we are gearing up for the new season of Keyholder Coaching Groups. So what are Keyholder Coaching Groups? Well, basically, this is a mastermind group of six coffee shop owners that are coming together on a bi-weekly basis. 12 times over the course of six months. We get together for two hours and we focus on helping each other succeed in specialty coffee retail. These are wonderful sessions that provide accountability, insights, and a mutual support and a community for coffee shop owners to become better as leaders and to make their cafes better and serve their people well. Now, this has been going on since last year and we are in our second season and now we are gearing up for the third season starting in September. So if this is interesting to you and you want to be considered for the keyholder coaching groups coming up, then go ahead and email chris at keys to the shop.com. C-H-R-I-S at keys to the shop.com. I'll put your name on a list of people who are interested in early access to the application to be in this paid mastermind group of coffee shop owners. And it has always, always been so rewarding to watch people come together to help one another. I get to facilitate these groups and I'm thrilled that I not only get to speak into a lot of these issues or challenges that come up from our members, but I get to see the magic of people working together to help each other succeed. So uh, again, if you're interested, go ahead and email chris at keys to the shop.com. Now, one of the things that I love about specialty coffee is the fact that we can explore flavor in the cup and we can track that flavor to something that we do with our hands. Like we have rendered this product as human beings from the seed all the way to what we're sipping on right now as we're listening to this podcast. It is a product born from innovation and one of the latest innovations in coffee has come through Ground Control over at groundcontrol.coffee. The Ground Control over many years now has been really upending people's expectations for what a batch brewer can do to extract the most from a coffee. Not only is this a game-changing batch brewer, but it also makes batched espresso concentrate as well as cold brew concentrate. So you get to create more beverages with this machine. So it's not only an upgrade in quality, but also in efficiency. So if you want to serve your customers the best possible expression of coffee in your shop, and also open up new possibilities for extraction across your menu, then go ahead and check them out over at groundcontrol.coffee. Now, one of the longtime supporters of this show is the Barista Series from Pacific. And the uh, folks at the Barista Series have been supporters of coffee and the coffee community for quite a long time. The Barista Series is the line of plant-based performance beverages that is preferred by baristas worldwide because it is created for them, with them in mind. It is tested by some of the world's best baristas, and that's why it stands up to the heat from steaming. It produces awesome texture for your beverages and also keeps the drink focused on the coffee. The taste is balanced, and that's no accident. That's engineered for performance. So go to pacificfoodservice.com and check them out, get samples, try it for yourself. I think you'll be really impressed with all of their lineup. And again, if you're looking for the best plant-based beverages for your customers, go check out the Barista Series from Pacific. Okay, everyone. Well, occasionally we like to go into the archives of Keys to the Shop. And one of those episodes was, you know, maybe a few years ago on the show. Now I can say that, you know, we've been doing the show for seven years now. So we're going back about three years to 2021. 
And we're going to be talking about six qualities of coffee shop leaders. And I'm going to re-air this conversation that we had together. And if you've listened to this, this is a great reminder of how we as a community of like-minded professionals have two things that we need to do. We need to serve coffee that is amazing and the product needs to be really amazing. And we need to do it in such a way that provides a wonderful experience with great hospitality. And part of the way that that happens is through effective leadership of your staff, of all the people that are under the roof of your cafe who have said, I want to make good coffee for people and I want to serve people well. But one of the things that we can get hung up on is that as leaders, we need to be fully capable of doing all the jobs in the cafe and maybe we need to be the best at doing them or we just get hung up on this idea that we need to be the focus and actually the most effective form of leadership is learning how to activate the skills of the people who have gathered with you to create this expression of a coffee shop and you don't necessarily need to be as good as them in certain areas, but you do need to have certain qualities in order to steward the uh, potential energies of this moment in time, this business, these people, and their talents, as well as your own. Leading yourself well is important too. So in this conversation, the six essential qualities of coffee shop leaders, this is what we focus on. And I think it's so important because leadership as a conversation happens all the time. As an application that's practically applied daily, not nearly as often as we talk about it. So when we hear about these qualities today, I would challenge you, figure out which one or two of them really resonates with you as something that you see, yes, this is something that I need to apply, and start practicing this thing in your business, in your cafe. Put it on your schedule. Make this practical. Don't make this a a concept. Listening to a podcast is great. Nodding along is great. Epiphanies are fine. Uh, Realizations, aha moments and whatnot. However, what really matters is consistent application over time. And qualities of a person are qualities because they are practices, because they are habits. And so as you listen today, think next about how to practically apply these things so that you can be a more effective leader in the coffee shop The world needs really good coffee shops, and I'm both sad and hopeful at the same time. Sad in that there are a lot of different ways that the ball gets dropped at the cafe level that it doesn't need to be. I mean, this is kind of the whole uh, inspiration for Keys to the Shop is what can we do? Like, how great could this coffee shop be? Where are we now? And how do we close that gap? It has to do with people. It has to do with operations. It has to do with quality. And within those three categories, we have basically everything that goes into a coffee shop. Leadership is the thing that synergizes all of that, you know, to use the 80s or 90s buzzword. They just got done listening to the Seven Habits book by Stephen Covey. So uh, it's fresh on the mind, synergy. But it's a great word. And leaders, you really need to know that you've taken on a mantle that's really serious. Because the authority that you have and the power you have is for other people and for their success and to make them successful, which in turn makes it all work. And that's what we want, right? So let's talk about it. Here is our Encore episode, the six essential qualities of coffee shop leaders. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about character traits, about qualities in leadership in the coffee shop. Now, I know there are a lot of lists of you know qualities of leadership that are out there, but what I wanted to do here is slightly different in that each of these character traits or qualities of leadership in the coffee shop are arranged in order of how you would need to exhibit them to be a good leader in a coffee shop. Now, what inspires this uh, conversation today is conversations that I've had with clients of Keys to the Shop Consulting. There are a lot of people who are either just starting out in leading a coffee shop. They are not in the coffee industry, but they're about to become way into the coffee industry by opening a coffee bar. Or they are you know, veterans of the coffee industry, but they're about to step into a new era of leadership 
And in both cases, there are trepidations. There are there are um, you know, there's nervousness about hey, am I going to be able to do this? Because uh, frankly, your baristas and the people that you lead are going to exhibit qualities that you don't have. And the natural instinct is to say, well, how can I lead people if I don't have exactly what they have? So if my baristas are better at being a barista than I am, how can I be a leader of baristas unless I am the best barista? Or if um, I am personally not so detail-oriented in my life, but I hire people to be detail-oriented, how can I become um, a leader of of these people if I am not exhibiting those qualities myself? Now, a lot of you might have already jumped to where I'm going with this, which is this is not necessary. And I'll get to that in a second. But we do think it's necessary because we have this linear way of thinking about leadership that means we have to be superior or equal to an individual um, rather than looking at the unique traits that we have to contribute to allow somebody else's unique traits to be uh, on display. Uh, so where somebody is weak, another person can be strong, and that's okay. How can we allow for the strengths of those that are on our teams, these unique strengths, to shine um, and for us to be able to give platform to that rather than look at it as a source of insecurity for ourselves. Because when we have this inward focus about what we are not, we can't really focus on what other people are. And it's hard to lead people uh, when we're only looking at ourselves. So I wanted to talk about that at the outset here, that um, you don't need to exhibit the exact qualities or strengths of the people that you lead. Um, Part of leadership is celebrating those strengths that maybe you don't have. Now, while that's true, I think there are character traits that can be developed or are necessary in order to make leadership effective in the coffee shop. So if you're you're thinking, maybe I'm not as good at the things that I want other people to be good at, that's okay. It's perfectly fine that you're not, let's say, uh, as you know, process oriented as somebody who you hire to be process oriented. If you, for instance, are an owner and you hire somebody to be an operations manager and you want them to be really, really good at spreadsheets, okay, that does not mean that you need to be great at spreadsheets. It does, however, mean that you need to have certain skills or develop certain skills uh, that will help lead that individual. So let's get right into it. Let's get into the six character traits or qualities that are, I think, really integral to being a good leader in the coffee shop. And remember, these are in order of how they develop and they mature in your practice of leadership. So first, mindfulness. Practicing mindfulness has everything to do with making sure that you are not only aware of your trajectory, but also aware of your wake. So the wake is that disturbance of water that trails behind a boat going through the water, right? Um, You are on a course, you're on a setting, you have to be aware of that. But when you're on a lake or a body of water with other people, you have to be aware of how much disturbance the boat causes. So if there's somebody really close to you and you know that the wake of your boat is going to cause a lot of waves, you have to be a little considerate of that. So it's forward focused and you're also looking at the results of what your actions cause. So it's really a holistic view of driving this ship, this coffee shop. So the decisions that you make and the way that you conduct yourself is done with a goal in mind, but also with respect to how it's going to set with other people, with customers, with staff, even with yourself. And when you ignore one of the things, one of those areas, the goals that drive your actions or the impact of your actions, and even just knowledge of the dimensions of this vehicle and and what it's capable of, then there's disaster. Then we start just steamrolling people in the coffee shop. We don't have any concept of how our actions impact other people. We're only focused on the goal. And for some reason, we're not attaining the goal because we are not really aware 
of how we are impacting other people. So we say, we want you to upsell at the register. We say, you got to sell more muffins, sell more of these drinks or that uh, menu item. But the way to get there is not by just focusing on one aspect, but all of them by being mindful that, yes, you do want people to upsell, but have you trained them to do so? Have you resourced them? Uh, Are you sure that the way that you're describing this action that you want them to take is being understood properly? Have you thought about how you present as a leader and whether or not you are an intimidating presence? That's a huge problem for a lot of people. No matter if you don't, if you don't consider yourself intimidating, um, there are people I think just by the, their, their size or demeanor might just classically be intimidating, but there's lots of ways to be intimidating. Um, you can just be stressed out and you could be the most petite and non-threatening presence (laughs) in, in the world. But if you're stressed out and you're sharp and aggressive, then you're going to be intimidating. So being mindful is taking into consideration that all of your actions have huge implications uh, in the business because you are an authority, because you're a leader. It's under scrutiny. It's magnified. It has a ripple effect more so than other people in the business. So again, you're aware of where you're going, but you're also aware of the wake in your impact and the things that contribute to that impact also. Uh, your attitude and how you present is one of those ways. And there's a lot of other ways also. So uh, first, if to be a good leader, I think you need to be pretty mindful. Now, number two here would be uh, empathy, being empathetic. And empathy is a very specific kind of mindfulness. You are putting yourself into the position of other people. This could be either theoretically or it can be literal. And I think being literal would be a very good thing to do. You can't always do that, but you can practice the exercise mentally of you know trying to figure out what is it like, and I always say this, to live within the systems that you create, that I create. So if I say, I'm going to have everybody do things this way, I'm going to have everybody close the shop this way. Well, empathy uh, would be either if you are working on the bar, doing it yourself to see how it is. Or if you're not working the bar, getting a lot of feedback from other people about whether or not what you're about to propose would make sense. And also watching what people do in order to really have knowledge of what is and what will be. How will this be taken? You know, when you when you implement a new way of making drinks, a new way of closing the bar, uh, making sandwiches, all that. Being empathetic is an outward focused practice of saying, I want to make sure that I'm not just creating things without feeling or at least pr- without predicting and, and feeling the impact of it myself as I write it, because that feeling will help guide your writing and the implementation, and therefore the effectiveness of what you put out there. Because at some point you're going to be uh, writing and be like, my, my, I can't do this. Nobody can do this. This is inhuman. I can't make people do all this stuff. Uh, be, I want them to, but it's just not practical. Somebody who's empathetic will get to that point where they have to stop themselves. Somebody who's not empathetic will say, okay, well, they're just going to have to suck it up because I want it and I'm the boss. And so there. (laughs) Um, So empathy is one of those traits born from mindfulness that's more of an applied mindfulness. It's about identifying with other people and allowing that practice of identifying with them to guide how you communicate, what you say, what you do, and how you lead. And ultimately, people will understand based on your actions over time, whether or not you're empathetic. They won't necessarily understand that you're empathetic simply because you say so. If you just say, you know, hey guys, I I really want to understand where you're coming from. I really want to know, you know, I just want to be a good boss and, you know, just kind of talk about this a lot. Your actions need to back that up. We talk about values, action gap. 
and how people will interpret your values really only based on your actions over time because anybody can talk being a podcaster that's apparent that's hugely apparent <laughs> you know the challenge is to have a long-term view of these things so empathy is not just something that you cultivate in word but it's something that you practice in deed and then it becomes a reality it becomes a part of your identity because you haven't because you've changed who you how you operate over time and it becomes a part of how they identify you because again there's this history of action behind it so mindfulness then empathy and next in order here is patience so in order to be a good leader in the coffee shop you need to have patience now of course this is a given i think every list of leadership traits will probably at some point talk about uh, patience not that they wouldn't talk about any of these things but i want to contextualize it in the coffee shop and go back to what we are first talking about in our conversation which is you might be a new leader you may have actually just been a leader in some capacity in your past. You could have, you know, been a shift leader at Target, or you were actually leading a shop in a floor in a warehouse or a production facility. You might have been a, a lecturer or a professor or something like that. You have some kind of leadership. However, I, I, I like to say this sometimes, being a owner or leading a group of people in a coffee shop is kind of like being a camp counselor. Um, not to infantilize the workforce of coffee shops, but there is a lot of emotional load that comes with this. And there is a lot of handholding. There is a lot of leadership that's needed that you might not have thought would be needed. And, and most owners that end up in coffee shop leadership have not really experienced what it's like to lead a group of 20-somethings in a stressful environment. And so patience is particularly important because you may have gone through the exercise of becoming mindful and empathetic but then people happen then it gets hard and we realize that there's some atmospheric drag something is you know this is why things burn up upon entering the atmosphere of earth because of all of the uh, friction of the atmosphere on that object so imagine that your communication and the standards and all that stuff is entering this atmosphere of the staff culture there's some atmospheric drag and it will that friction will start to heat things up might heat you up you know and the trick here is patience patience as a preemptive positioning of your mind knowing that you are going to be tested your patience is going to be tested because people are not going to just jump when you say jump. They're not going to immediately, quote unquote, get it. I hear this all the time when I'm reading certain posts on you know, coffee forums where people are like, well, I hired a new person and they still don't get it after two weeks and maybe I should fire them. What do y'all think? And I'm like, <laughs> two weeks? I mean, and, and for a lot of people, the the training ends up being like, well, they were on bar with me for five shifts or six shifts and i just need people that just you know get it get it right now unrealistic expectations first of all uh second of all having a lot of impatience with other people is kind of an indictment against us because it shows that we don't even realize how much patience others have to have for us and we often want people to be able to just get it quote unquote really quickly because we know that we are kind of insecure with our own knowledge and we need people to sort of fill in for us pull up the slack of our insecurity be you know this superhuman because we feel very much the opposite so if we're honest about that then we can start to say okay we all need patience people be patient with me because i'm a new owner of a coffee shop or i'm a uh, i'm an owner who's trying to get a uh, a new way of doing business and doing life at this coffee bar going we're, we're trying to do 2.0 of our coffee shop and it's going to take some time and i need some patience with myself and, and i realize that you all are going to have to change the way you behave or it's going to take some time to get it it's going to take me some time to get it also so patience is hugely important um, because you're managing not only other people 
but you're also managing yourself and trying to exhibit the kind of qualities that you want other people to exhibit also. Now, of course, patience can only go so far. It's not like you can't put your foot down when there's bad behavior. Sometimes people really don't get it, you know? Um, they And it's become obvious to you that you've done all you can to help them. Uh, we always talk about looking at yourself first and then the system in an honest way, not in an assumptive way, because it's easy to just say, well, it's not me. It's not the system. It's got to be them, right? What did that take? Like five seconds of thought? I'm talking about like really examining, like taking a day or two to really mull this over. And you'll need to make a decision that it, it might be hard, but patience as a disposition and leadership will give everyone, including yourself, the best chance of success uh, before those conversations even need to be had. Now, the next character trait, the next quality of leadership in the coffee shop, remember this is in order, is consistency. I can't tell you the number of times where I've gone to a client's place over the years and talked with staff. And one of the things that I'll do is I'll just kind of talk with them about what they think about the business and working there. Um, and in these assessments, we try to get as detailed and thorough a, a look at the entire business as possible. Um, one of the themes that comes up all the time is inconsistency. Usually that's related to communication, but it can be related to almost anything. Inconsistency creates confusion, creates um, demoralization, and it is sort of a habit leadership gets in when they're inundated with too many inputs and don't have faith in themselves. And when I mean faith in themselves, I mean follow through, you know, where you say something and you know you're going to do it. Instead of that, we do the opposite, which is we use our words as bookmarks for things that we want, but we don't ever really have an intention of following through with, or we do have an intention, but we don't have a plan. So we talk about things and the talking actually makes us think that we've done something when in fact we've not done anything. We do this with promising fixes on the bar, raises for staff and everything in between. Um, what we say really needs to be backed up with what we do and it needs to be consistent. So I would rather see somebody just say less so that they can do it rather than promising the world and only giving them Delaware. <laughs> you know, I would rather see people just accomplish less, but better. We've talked about this a little bit, maybe uh, as an aside, I think our industry is what is like a maximalist industry in a sense, like minimalist decor, maximal promises, minimal delivery. So it's like this sandwich, like hardly anything in the cafe, you know, decor wise, promising the world in our marketing, not getting very much in return. That includes the customer experience, that includes the uh, barista experience. And so if we're talking about consistency, we need to be talking about, again, how these other uh, character traits build into that, mainly empathy and mindfulness. So if you're going to implement one-on-ones across three stores, it's not enough to just say, hey, everyone, we're going to start this next week. You have to actually plan out what the practicalities of it are, schedule it, make sure it's happening, and dedicate yourself to practicing leading that part of your business forever. It doesn't just go away. It doesn't just take care of itself eventually. It always needs to be curated. And, and this is how people kill plants in their house. They buy it and somehow expect that it's just going to live forever. And even air plants need some care. Um, I'm getting better at caring for plants because I realize they do actually <laughs> take water and sunlight and attention. And sometimes I sing to them. I'm kidding. I don't do that. But I might. I might start that. Uh, the point is, is that you can't just purchase something that you expect to grow and not invest into it. it, it, it that's why I say it's a forever thing but we act as though we can just throw things into this bin of our coffee shops and then it will take care of itself. That's where a lot of our inconsistency comes from because we've bitten off more than we can chew. So if you do less and are consistent with it, it's way better than trying to do more and just letting the balls drop all over the place. 
people don't have very much confidence in leadership that is just scattered, um, eccentric, which is just kind of a warmed over uh, way of saying, you know, we have no confidence in this person. <laughs> They're a loose cannon. So I think if you want to be a good leader, you need to be consistent, which means you need to actually count the cost of what it is you're promising, what you're communicating, and follow through with it across the board in all the shops, in all the communication channels, and that's your responsibility. You know, that is your craft. That's the same. It has the same importance as consistent quality with espresso. You train people to make sure that they're dialing in all the time and that they're factoring in things like roast date. And, you know, if the burrs are heating up, adjusting the grind mid shift, you know, this is part of the barista craft in leadership. It's the same thing. You have to look at the elements that will impact the consistency of leadership and communication culture, and then dial in all the time. That is that is a craft of leadership, and consistency is one of the cornerstones of that. Now, this leads us to number five, and that is confidence. Confidence is number five because you just don't start with confidence. If you are starting your coffee shop and you've not been in coffee before, I don't care what you've done in your past in leadership, you should not have a blowhard kind of confidence that says, I'm really good. We're really good. You know, th there's a bluster to some uh, people starting a coffee shop or even just people that are taking on new projects within a shop who haven't really taken the time to get to know what they have before they start taking on more. And that's really scary. That shuts down communication. They're not open to feedback. There's a lot of pride there. That's not the kind of confidence that I'm talking about. That's cockiness. It's arrogance in a bad sense. Arrogance is, the, the bad kind of arrogance is one that's not even really backed up by historical precedent. Like you haven't even practiced for this and you think you're going to be great at it. I'm confidence is cultivated through competence and competence is born through experience and taking advantage of your experiences to become competent, then confident has to, everything to do with approaching it mindfully. So again, these are in order. So when you're confident though, you can stand by your decisions because you have a history to look back on in the business and everybody kind of knows that this is your MO and having confidence is important because part of being a leader is being an agent of resourcing and clarity. You need to be able to tell people what to do, how to do it. You can't just be wishy-washy. You can't just throw it back into their court and call that empowerment. Um, you have to make decisions and be decisive, and you can't do that unless you have some confidence that's been cultivated over time. This is one of those things that you're going to have to be patient with yourself on. You're not going to be making as great of decisions in the first year as you will in the second year. Um, and you, people know that. You, and if you're open and vulnerable with people, you can say, I'm sorry, when you make mistakes. Tell them, I'm going to make mistakes. We're all becoming more expert at this as we go, and we're building our confidence as we go. Um, and, and we're going to make better decisions two years from now than we're going to make right now. But that doesn't mean we just don't make decisions. We have to. Think of confidence as kind of a, a strong faith that you have in the rightness of this particular decision or the way that we're doing things currently. It doesn't mean that you're not going to change over time. It does mean, however, that right now, this is the best option and we are going to go with it. And leaders are, if nothing else, decision makers for better or for worse. So you have to exhibit some level of confidence that will improve over time. And that leads me to our last uh, quality here, and that's curiosity. Part of how you change for the better is through curiosity. You're curious about your business, your people, your customers, uh, the unique personality of your business as it changes over time. It, we have to constantly be thinking about getting to know our business every single year. You're going to have some things that are just part of the personality of the business that you can kind of predict are going to happen. But not everything that we do in this business of coffee shops is predictable for the last couple of years as any indicator. Part of the insecurity that people have when starting a coffee shop 
is exhibited in a preoccupation with metrics and a preoccupation with forecasts. Like we're going to be here in five years. We're going to, this is how it's going to look. This is what the numbers say. And it's sort of a, a warm a digital blanket. If, but five years down the line, it actually doesn't look exactly like you thought it was going to look because they take on a life of their own. There are going to be some aspects of the business that are similar, but just like a child who grows and becomes their own person, they have, you know, your eyes or your nose or something like that, but their their likes and dislikes, the jokes that they laugh at and you know, other things like that. It, it's, it can be surprising. Like, oh, that's interesting. Or uh, to some people's dismay, it's just like, oh, I didn't think that that was going to happen. And they become like, if they're a control freak, they just start really worrying uh, instead of celebrating those differences, which brings us right back to the beginning of our conversation today. Uh, as we talked about how you know, being a leader is not so much about you exhibiting the skills of those that you lead, but more it's about creating a platform for other people's skills and strengths where you might be weak to actually shine so you can celebrate their strengths. So if you're not analytical and you have someone who is, that shouldn't be a worry necessarily. It should be something that you celebrate. Thank goodness that we have this person and we'll always need to have somebody who's analytical because as much as I might improve in that area, I'm not going to be as good as somebody who's naturally gifted in that area. And I don't have to be. I don't have to be as a leader. But what I do have to have, in my opinion, are these six things. A mindful disposition that leads us to make empathetic decisions and conduct ourselves empathetically. Patience in the process of building. Consistency in the process, as well as a confidence that grows through the experience of it all and maintaining a curious disposition that allows our coffee shop and the people in it to thrive. Okay, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And not only did you enjoy it, but I hope that you have taken notes and are on your way to put on your Google Calendar, whatever you use, the thing you're going to do next. There are a lot of episodes that we'll link to in the show notes here that I think you should also listen to. Make a plan of action and just execute those things until it becomes truly a quality that you possess and someone could say, this is true about this person. And this is something that you have to cultivate. It has to become a habit. So um, I hope that this was a helpful episode for that. But do please follow the links to the recommended episodes here in the show notes. And if you have questions or anything, just give me a shout. Chris at keys to the shop.com. There is a lot of this kind of stuff that we do talk about in the keyholder coaching groups, of course, as we have these conversations and also in my one-on-one -on -one coaching and consultation where I work with new coffee shops and established businesses to help them take their coffee shop to its natural next level. Big distinction there is, you know, you can say next level, but we want to make sure that the next steps are appropriate, that they're right and are fitting for your unique business. We do that through conversation, through coaching and consulting and application over time. Uh, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, also just use that same email, chris at keys to the shop.com. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thanks so much, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe, share the podcast on social media with your team and friends. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.